Yeah. Peace, Pharaoh back again to address the challenge by Ayo Delhi. And I'd like to begin to say that I'm here to defend my ancestors who are deceased, who are not alive, to defend themselves against their own descendants. All right. Um, we are on to his evidence number two. Let me grab that. Evidence number two is the Iparu papyrus. He says the Iparu papyrus is the single papyrus holding an ancient Egyptian poem called the Admonitions of Iparu, or the Dialogue of Iparu, <clears throat> and the Lord of All. Its official designation is the papyrus laden, number 1344 recto. It is housed in the Dutch National Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands after being purchased from Giovanni Anasti, Swedish Council to Egypt in 1828. The sole surviving manuscripts dates to the later thir uh, 13th century BC, um, no earlier than 19th century. He gives Wikipedia as the reference. Wonderful. We're going to begin off by saying that Wikipedia, as the reference that he gives, lets it be known that this is an Egyptian poem. A poem. He's later going to use this Egyptian poem as some type of historical event that is logging a drastic attack on Egypt, plagues by the god Yahweh. These Hebrew Israelites are turning a poem of order ab Keo, order out of chaos, into a historical event. He gave the Wikipedia reference, and it says it's an Egyptian poem. Um, a poem is not a historical event, but let's continue with this. Okay? Um, as we scroll down, um, it says, out of nowhere, I don't even know why it says this, but it says, Habarus, who carry stones to the great pylon of Ramesses. Okay? This is what it says under the Iparu papyrus, under his, his, um, his essay. And then when I go to the website, it gives me this, um, this Caucasian man here, Aaron Colum, and it says, Heb uh, Hebrews in Egypt, slaves and plagues, extra biblical proof. So, of course, we have a European backing up this extra biblical proof because, once again, I have not seen any document any ancient document written um, by a melanated person in ancient times that ever said that Hebrews were in Egypt. But we're going to go down, <clears throat> and he gives this image right here. Here's an image right here. I'm going to get this close. He said these are um, the brick mortars, the Hebrew slave brick mortars working for the Temple of Ramesses. Where is this image from, I ask? <clears throat> Hebrews will never give an image and show the actual writing that's underneath the image. They'll always give an image, and then they'll show their writing underneath it. They'll never show you what the hieroglyphic says. How do we know these are Hebrews? We just have to go by faith of the Hebrews. Nowhere, in this, nowhere does it say these are Hebrews, but he gave a website. And the website here that you can go to to see this image is sarabi 3 tripod dot com Israelite images okay so but the question is are Hebrews known for stealing images and taking them out of context hold up are Hebrews known for stealing images and taking them out of context I would say absolutely yes without a shadow of a doubt I want to um, <clears throat> show you these right here let me see this these are, these are images from Kemetic temples of men with their dogs. Not just regular men, royal, royal men. Okay? This is um, Kui, right here, with his dog. Over here is a, another image here. You see the dog over here. The Kemetic high priest. This is, um, this is Rekha at Thebes. You see him with his dog. Okay, and then you have Ippi. Ippi was a royal scribe and high steward and overseer at the harem of Akhenaten. 
unfinished tomb of Ippi is located in Tel Amarna. The interior plane of the tomb is hardly decorated with entrance cor courier is finely oriented and it goes on anyways. This is Ippi. I want to get you guys a good image of Ippi right here. And then I scroll up, you see his little dog on the side. Okay? This is Ippi, a royal scribe of Ankhenaten. Most people have heard of Ankhenaten. And here is his royal scribe. This is what it says on the side of his, it's his own tomb. Okay? Tombs were not just built for anyone in ancient Kemet. You had to have money and finance and status to build special tombs that would house your body and to be mummified, which in some cases could take a process of 281 days would be the mummification process. Regular people, any regular person could not just do this. So this is from a royal tomb of a man named Ippi, okay, who lived 1240 BC. I'll get you another image of that, Ippi. Right there. Now here's where the false propaganda begins with the Hebrew Israelites from the same website that this gentleman Io gave. Okay? This is from the website that he gave that showed Hebrew servants. Here's the website right here, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to it. Okay? Here it is right here. The exact same image. Okay? And it says, Brick Makers in Egypt 18th pharaonic dynasty in Egypt. That's what it says in their writings. It doesn't say that on the walls of the, of the temples of Kemet. It says that in their writings. Now let's look back at the website. They give Exodus 114 as a reference. Now we go back to the website. And hey, look. Look who's on the website here. Hey, does this look familiar to anybody? It's Ippy. Let's go to their website, guys. I'm going to scroll over here, down, go to the Internet. Hopefully, it should still be up. Here is their website. Now, I'm actually on the website. You can see the image from where this Hebrew Israelite pulled it from. And here he is, Ippi. Look, remember we just discussed Ippi? On the, in, he had a tomb. Ippi was the royal scribe of Ankhenaten. Okay? And now Ippi is on their website. Why is Ippi on the Hebrew Israelite website? Is it on the website because they're discussing the Proverbs of Ippi? No. Let's see what it says. Copy, copy of the wall painting tomb of Ippi. This is from the Hebrews I website. They're acknowledging this is Ippi, spelled Ippui, at Thebes, 13th century in the Metropolitan Museum. This is the tomb of Ippi. You see Ippi and his dog. The royal people had dogs. But look what the Hebrews I say. Look close. Hebrew water boy. Ippi is a Hebrew water boy? Ippi, here he is again. Ippi, the scribe of Ankhenaten, on his tomb, which costs, would be equivalent to tens of thousands of dollars to make. You see Ippi here, and the Hebrews put him as a Hebrew water boy. Why is he a Hebrew water boy? These are blatant lies, open lies upon the ancient Kemetic society. When did Ippi ever call himself a Hebrew water boy? He was a scribe of Ankhenaten. Okay, we're going to continue this. It's not. We're going to continue this in the second part. I'm going to say peace for now. We'll continue. Peace.